Thank you for clicking on the link to watch our video. We are the Aging Reversal Research Group, which consists of my students listed here and myself, and we're located at Mount St. Mary College in Newburgh, New York. In this video, I'm going to try and explain what we're going to do, or at least try to do, in our lab this summer, which is the summer of 2016. Obviously, as our name implies, we're interested in the biology of aging. And personally, I find myself getting more interested in aging with each passing day. I could go into a lot of detail as to why we're interested in aging, but just suffice it to say that older people have a lot more problems than young people. When we're young, we're strong and full of energy and healthy, but as we get older, we become more sedentary, we lose that energy, and we become more susceptible to disease. And if we can delay or even reverse the effects of aging, perhaps we can delay or even avoid these problems altogether. So, a few important questions. Why do we age? How do we age? What controls aging? And of course, can we reverse aging? When we come right down to it, we really don't know that much about aging. Well, what do we know? That might be a good place to start. If we look at different animals, we notice that they all have different lifespans. For example, mice have an average lifespan of two years. Dogs can live around 13 years. Cats, 15 years. Horses, up to 30 years. Pet turtles can live up to 80 years. And the average American can expect to live up to 70 eight years. These are just averages of course, some will live a bit longer and some not as long. I threw that little worm in there because that's one of the organisms that we'll be using in our research. It's called C. elegans and that has a lifespan of only two weeks. Since different species have unique lifespans, this implies that aging is an inherited trait. We also know that genes control heredity. Therefore, genes could control aging. So, what are genes? Genes are pieces of DNA that contain information. You might ask, information for what? Well, that would be information for making proteins. Now, when we mention proteins, most people think of stuff like milk, eggs, meat, fish, basically food stuff. Now these are good examples of proteins. After all, we need to consume proteins because we are proteins. Now proteins also have other functions. Proteins can have a regulatory function. That is, proteins can regulate genes, which is interesting when you think about it. You need genes to make a protein, but then you need a protein to tell the genes when and what proteins to make. This is a bit like the chicken and the egg conundrum. So if proteins regulate genes and genes regulate aging, at least that's our hypothesis, what proteins are regulating the aging genes? Well, many people before us have thought about this, and one good candidate is called the FOXO1 gene. So what does the FOXO1 gene do? Well, FOXO1 gene makes a protein, and that protein regulates other genes. We could say that FOXO1 is a master gene. It turns on other genes when the cell is stressed, like when it doesn't have enough food. In other words, FOXO1 helps the cell survive. It helps in longevity. So now the question is, what controls the FOXO1 gene? Is it another protein, or the environment? Well again, other people have been busy studying this and what they found is that there are certain compounds which may play a role in longevity. One of these compounds is called resveratrol, which is found in grapes and red wine. Another compound may be rapamycin. This is a medication which suppresses the immune system. It's given to patients who have had an organ transplant so that their immune system won't reject a new organ. So our goal is to find out if we can turn on the FOXO1 gene in cells and also in C. elegans. 
So that's it. That's what we hope to accomplish this summer. We hope to be able to turn on a gene which delays aging. It may sound simple enough, but it will require a lot of time, work, and also money. Supplies for these types of experiments are expensive, so we're asking for your help and support. This is our proposed budget, and as you can see, it doesn't seem very extensive. Yet even for these materials, the price tag can add up. By the way, these are my references, and it's what I base the information in this video on. So if you like this video, and think our research has some validity, please click below and visit our Facebook page, or send us a tweet.